Um, well, I am so honored to be here again. You ladies are absolutely fantastic. Um, you look amazing. Thank you. I, so do you. I think I need one of those for, for my hair. Yeah, um, I obviously you. don't have the bling. I am wearing my Elena. Oh, oh. You're yes, Elena. Elena. We love that. I am. I had to represent tonight because she is so amazing and a oh, Fort Worth lady oh, like us. Oh, yeah. So, I saw that prize she's doing, a custom painting. Isn't that crazy? Oh, amazing. Amazing. Well, I have a special guest here tonight, um, and his name is Isaac. And I would love for you guys to hear him and um, get to hear a little bit about his story. So I'm going to turn it over to them before I jump into um, what I'm going to say. All right. Great. Perfect. Um, my name is Isaac White. I was put into the hospital on May 3rd. No, March. March, sorry, March 3rd. And because my leg was like double the size it should be. And after finding out I had multiple MRIs, multiple like x-rays, I found out that I had a really bad staph infection in my bone in my leg called new staph infection. I also oh, had a called MRSA. <clears throat> I also had a really bad blood infection, which caused these big old heads on my leg to come up and it was really nasty. <laughs> it was called sepsis. Uh -huh. um, it was a really hard experience. Just the whole, Coach really made it better because they helped me through all of it. They provided so much stuff for me and my family. And after all, I had to end up having four surgeries in total. And I had three decisions with four total surgeries. And I am now on my way to a healthy recovery. Wow, that's so exciting. So he had um, what is called in his left tibia of his um, bottom half of his shin. That's his shin bone. He had a and it had. Oh, sorry, what was that? He had what? Sorry, yeah, it, you cut out a little bit. Okay, so he had a, it, it was called osteomyelitis, and um, because we didn't realize that's what he had, by the time that he was diagnosed, he had um, a bacterial infection in his lungs, bacterial MRSA, um, pneumonia. He was septic, which is your a blood infection. Um, he went into kidney failure. He had to be on ICU uh, because of all of that. And he, like you said, he had to have multiple surgeries. Um, then he was in the hospital for the entire month of March. Um, he was, he was admitted on March 3rd and we got out the very last week of March. And um, then in July, we found out that his infection has come back and um, we're, he takes antibiotics multiple times a day and we're continuing to watch that. We went today, there's some, some concerning signs, but um, he, he has to go back next week for some more tests because it's an ongoing thing. Um, so um, first experience with cooks and we realized the um, amazing things that happened there. We were there during COVID so it was a little different than what um, some experiences are because they were on lockdown and had all the um, unique guidelines that were followed. But, um, and I'm sure that I've never been to the hospital in Dallas, but the um, amazing things that happen at Cook's for the families that go through the stuff that they go through is just more than really people understand until they've lived through it. And like I said, we were only there a month, but it was, it was really amazing for us. Wow, yeah. that's so cool to learn about. And yeah. Isaac, what was some of the, it's Isaac, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what were some of the fun things that you got to do at Cooks? Uh, there was a lot. There were, one of my favorite things was they brought these dogs in and they let me like yeah. play with them. It was super mm -hmm. fun. There were also, there was this, like a game. There, on the first floor, there was this room like the, all these games, like a pool table, and like that was also pretty fun. Yeah. And when the 
time that he couldn't leave his room, they offer all of like that through the TV whenever he was at a period where he couldn't leave. Oh, awesome. what was your favorite dog's name? Um, Steve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steve. Aww. He was pretty new too. Yeah. Right there. That's so neat. We've heard a lot about the dogs from Texas. So that's super cool. And then I was going to ask, you said that COVID kind of made it different. What were the certain things that made um, your experience a little bit different or changed that with COVID? Well, um, we could only have so certain visitors. At, once COVID went into effect, it was only parents could come no siblings or family. We have a really large family. And so it was a little difficult. Um, and we have other children other than Isaac. And so that was one of the big things. And then um, normally they do with, before COVID, he was there for a week before COVID went into effect. And they did like pretty much that is calendar of stuff that they brought people in, they bring people in, they do concerts, they do uh, painting and all different kinds of activities, but they couldn't do any of that with COVID. Um, they still had the play area, like he was talking about. I don't exactly, Aaron knows what that's called. I, I don't know exactly what that's called, but, um, and then they also had like, you could get your hair cut and stuff like that. And they had to discontinue that. And so, um, but those are all services that we got to utilize for a little bit before COVID went into effect. But those were just some of the things that were limited due to COVID. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That's awesome. Um, I just, I think it's so cool. The dog program, um, just the special bond that you can have with the dogs. Did you feel that Isaac, like how they just kind of understood you and maybe what was it like having like that companion? It was like, it was super cool because like until that point I was like super sad because the first time I've ever been in the hospital, like for major things oh, yeah. and like my, just pictures of me with, uh, and I have the biggest smile on my face because I was Aww. so happy and just made my whole experience better oh uh, that's so good I love that yeah especially I mean being in the hospital is so scary it's and so then scary. when you're going through what you went through that's like so scary you don't know what's going on so to have like a friend like a, a dog I know I have four dogs and so <laughs> each dog brings a different aspect to the table and so I've got that dog who's super nice and never barks but she can bark and then another dog who's like super crazy and then another dog who we're like okay what are you doing here she's, she's from the shelter she's kind of she's she's been through some rough times and then another dog as well so um I know the special bond that to have with dogs and stuff and so it's it's really cool because they it almost feels like they know what you're thinking without even saying it would you agree yeah yes ma'am yeah, that's yeah. super cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And then Erin, I wanted to ask you, I know I asked you the other night, but just for the people who weren't on, um, what does it, how does COVID affect um, you as someone who works there? So with COVID, mm -hmm. things are a little different at the hospital. Um, like what Isaac was saying is um, we have a very robust programming. Um, we make sure that not only do our kiddos get taken care of, but siblings as well. And so we've had to cut back on um, most of that programming because we don't need 15 people in the child life zone, which is where um, Isaac got to go and play pool and Xbox and PlayStation. And um, we've got um, a racing um, game and we've got other arcade cabinets. It's, it's a lot of fun in there. And that's where um, a hub of a lot of our beautiful programming happens and we've had to kind of structure that back a little bit we still do programming but a lot of times we will take it to the rooms so you can tune in to our tvs which is clz tv it's channel 39 um that's what you get to watch when you're in the hospital and you get to engage with different things so we put on a game show and we've got a full recording studio. So people can go and be part of the game show. And if you're in your room, you can literally call down on your phone and you can still be part of it or win and prizes will be delivered to you. So we've still tried to um, keep that engagement, but it's just a little bit different. Yeah, right. and Having one parent instead of two parents, that's hard for kids. Right. Um, even if you're a, you know, a grown teenager, just like Isaac, 
it's hard only having one parent there. It's hard on parents too, oh, yeah. oh. because parents need that break. They, they need that moment to, when things are going on, you don't understand the diagnosis. You don't understand everything that's going on. They need to take that moment and step back. And sometimes that's where you tag team with the other parent or a grandparent or somebody else who can come in while you take that moment to just breathe. Mm -hmm. And I know that is the hardest thing. Um, as a mom, um, that's what I do. I, I rely on my husband to have that, um, you know, that bond where I just look at him. I'm like, there. he can look at my eyes and say, okay, she's, she's a little overwhelmed right now. I'm gonna step in um, while mom takes a moment um, because I have a medically complex child as well. So it's, it's something that is, you know, it's harder when you just have one person, right. but we try and make sure that you have that connection while you're there. Yeah, that's, no. amazing. that's super cool. I really, really like that. And I think it's so neat, like you said, that it's, it's changed since COVID, but I think that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. How you not only try and make a really cool um, experience for the kid in the hospital, but also their siblings and their entire family. I think that's so neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also think it's amazing how, um, what, what you just said, that parents do need a break. I mean, just the patient, you know, um, uh, the kids, what they're going through, you know, they're scared, they don't know what's going on. And then you have the parent asking mm -hmm. where they're scared, they don't know what's going on, but you gotta be strong for your kids. So it's so awesome that you kind of give them that break to just kind of think and be like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm not with the game plan. That's, that's like so awesome, so cool that you yeah. provide that, so. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I wanna thank Isaac and his mom for coming on and sharing a little bit about their story. And um, I have some other little stuff, but I'll let them kind of um, hop off and, and get back to their Friday evenings. Yeah, um, so thank you guys. You guys are amazing. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Bye. So with, um, with Isaac and them, they are part of that patient ambassador program that we have. And um, it's, it's amazing watching how our patients get to share parts of their story and what they connect with at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know that he shared a little bit about the, um, the dog program. So that's called Sit, Stay, Play. Mm -hmm. And the best part about that is it is 100% donor funded. Wow. And that is amazing. We would not have this program if we didn't have donors to be part of it. Wow. And he mentioned Steve. Steve mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. If you are on Instagram, go follow Sit, Stay, Play, the Cook Children's Sit, Stay, Play. It is amazing. Um, and you'll see the shenanigans that our dogs get into. Uh -huh. um, little anecdote about Steve, the other day they posted a picture of him, full muzzle of glitter. He Ooh, found a cool. bottle of no glitter way. and exploded it across his face. Oh, wow. <laughs> so funny. What type so of dog? funny. But they are, um, they are amazing. We have seven dogs and oh, they all are badged members of Cook uh -huh. Children's. They all have their own badge. Oh my God. Um, Yay. It all says their name and they get to go on rounds in the hospital. Oh. So, you know, when, when kids like Isaac are trying to figure out what it, what their life looks like, um, mm -hmm. sepsis is not easy to deal with. I mean, that's an entire infection in your blood system. And that's, and that's a really scary thing to kind of go through. Mm -hmm. So having that companion where you can just lean on and hug and that dog will hug you back and um, they're amazing the dogs will literally like nuzzle into your your shoulder and um you know just help you feel okay and just the the simple act of petting a dog releases those endorphins um which help bring these patients spirits up and it's it's so beautiful and some of the other things that um i know he didn't mention but I'm certain he got to take part of because he, he kind of hinted at some of them. So like our um, car pay program, which is our creative arts and residence program, we have so many different parts of this where kids can paint, they can use um, art as therapy. They, we have music therapy um, we do yoga. There's, there's so many different things that kids can take part of that bring joy to them. 
And um, I, I have a, a story about one, uh, about a couple of these programs kind of coming together. And this is a story from this past year, my ambassador, um, her name was Alexa. And Alexa's story, it, it's, it's hard to get through, but it's got such beauty in it because on December 26th of 2018, she and her family were heading home um, from Christmas and they were in a head-on collision. Um, she lost both of her parents immediately and her sister was care flighted to Cook Children's while she was at a regional hospital. They assessed her very quickly and sent her also to Cook Children's. Wow. And she, she came in knowing that she didn't have her parents and she didn't know the status of her sister. And they, they, there was a, just a world of chaos going on. And she held true to her faith. And um, while she was there, she received um, what we call one of our prayer bears. Um, it's a stuffed teddy bear. It's $12. It's not a huge deal to normal people. But the most beautiful thing was when they realized that her sister Olivia was, sorry, this story is very hard to get through. When her sister was not going to make it, the child life specialist took Alexa to her sister's room. They took a simple canvas. They put her sister's footprint in the middle and they put her handprints on the side to create an angel so that her sister would continue to watch over her. And we brought out our stethoscope, our high-powered stethoscope, and recorded her sister's heartbeat. And they put that inside the bear. So when Alexa walked out of that hospital without her sister or her parents, she had her guardian angel and her sister's heartbeat. Wow. If you don't think donations matter, that $12 mattered to Alexa, twelve dollars. That's literally two Starbucks drinks. Yeah. If you don't think that that thirty cents matters, mm -hmm. it mattered to Isaac. Mattered to every single patient that walks in or comes through our doors. It matters to everyone, and you have the ability to make that difference. Yeah. You do just by saying yes. And every single one of you, every single person at Jabos has that spirit, that servant's heart to serve the community. And you guys make change happen. You literally bring joy to our patients and you bring hope back into their life. So when Alexa tells her story and she says, I may not have walked out with my family, but I walked out with hope. There is joy in my heart and I still have a life to live. And I know that my family's here with me and I can listen to that heartbeat whenever I need to. And that is the power that donations have. That's the power that you have. Every time you walk through those doors, you have the power to change a life and to bring that hope. And that's why we are so incredibly grateful for what you do, for how you bring a community together. It's not just a, the helpful hardware place. You guys are transforming lives and you guys get to be part of that journey. So the next time you think that that 40 cents doesn't matter. I want you to stop and remember that to our patients, it does. And that's the most beautiful thing in the world. Oh, Erin, that was so sweet. Oh my gosh, it's so sweet. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, I think it's good to take like segments like these to know like oh, yeah. where our money is going towards and that you're not, I, I love how you say that, you know, um, that 40 cents may not matter to us, but it matters to girls like, um, do you say her name is Alexis? Yeah. Her name is Alexis. So, yeah. 
Uh, that was that was uh, so that was a sad story, but a very you know it. I mean, life is tough, and yeah. it makes it makes it real. Mm-hmm. Our cause and what what we do when we do our roundup program, and you know, oh, yeah. knowing that our money, that money that is going towards helps um, little girls like Alaska, you know, yeah. have gifts like that. It's so touching. Absolutely. I yeah. think it's important. Wow, yeah, it's important to know the weight of that, even though it's hard, um, to know the weight of what people go through and where that money is truly going and how we're able to help them. Um, that's, yeah, that's so touching. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. I know that was hard to get through, but we really appreciate it. No, that's super neat. It's, it's different when I personally know these kids since I run the ambassador program, I, I live these stories with them. Um, but she is doing so well right now. She lives with her grandmother. She's thriving. Um, I still, I keep up with her on a regular basis and she just, she's got the most beautiful outlook on life. And I told her the last time I saw her, I said, Alex, I wish I had just an ounce of your joy that you have because it is so infectious, the way that she just shares it. And she openly gives it to people. And she says, my job in life is to bring that joy to other people. And um, to come from that tragedy, she, she has made an impact where she is and she's starting to look for where she wants to go to college now. And um, she's a straight A student and just, I mean, there's, there's joy in that uh, you know, in that story. And um, she, she just has that hope and that's what she wanted to share with everybody. And I just cannot thank you guys enough for what you do, for how you guys support. And, you know, every time I walk in to one of the stores, I know that there is such love and devotion in what you guys do. You may think it's just selling, you know, Christmas or holidays or the next amazing hobo bag or the beautiful Alana K earrings, but you're selling hope and joy and you get to be part of that, bringing it to the hospital. So for that, we are forever grateful. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're grateful for you coming on, talking to us. And it's our honor to yeah. be able to help you guys. So we yeah. really appreciate it. We want to thank you so much. We want you to have an amazing rest of your evening. And just uh, thank you. Too. I know. I'm sad we have to end on yeah. hearing these stories, but we really appreciate you so much. Well, thank you guys again. And I hope that um, you have a wonderful rest of your Friday. I'll be watching um, from my side. Awesome. Um, we Bye. appreciate you so much. Bye, Erin. Wow, that, that was, was so touching. So touching. Um, I was trying to fight back this story. Oh, me but, too. Yeah. You know, I like again. I said it's good to just know, like, you know, this is real. Like, yeah. money is going to those causes. Um, yeah, it's important to know where it's going to and how much it means. I think it's so easy for us to like not think about or rush off the fact um, that it can mean so much to a kid um, or to anyone. So it's just really important that we help them. So that was really neat. So I really appreciate Aaron.